I saw this on IFN. Apparently, Fred is going to be making his Misfits debut this year. What? Fred has always said that he just wants to do interviews. He just wants to be an interview guy. Like, what? I'm actually excited to see this. Even look at him training with BJ Flores. Like, Fred is taking this shit seriously. In my opinion, if it was up to me, him versus Fox. That needs to happen like yesterday. I feel like that would literally bang and bring in a lot of people. Like imagine him versus Vox DG, similar ages. They've even got like similar fan bases. Like they're both heavily known in Misfits. Like who doesn't know Fox and who doesn't know Fred in Misfits? Everybody knows these people. Like them, that matchup right there, that's what I want to see. Misfits 14 is going to be a pay-per-view card. I think it's happening in May. I'm not pretty sure, but I remember Mam saying something like that. So I'm looking forward to that. And I think that Kenny, King Kenny, is going to be on that card. His brother posts up a lot of the training footage to his Instagram. Someone in one of the videos that he posted about Kenny said, I know this is about Kenny, but is Deji even doing boxing anymore? And Daily just responded, go and ask him can't lie i don't know what is going on with deji i have not seen or heard from him within this influencer boxing scene in a very long time ifn posted this picture of deji on their twitter talking about his current physique and he's looking i can't lie he's looking a bit chubby but at the same time he is in a hoodie like you can't really judge someone's physique when they're in a hoodie. As you can see in the comments of that post, a lot of people are calling him lazy, which I do understand. Like, Deji has come across as quite a lazy person. To me, the Just way I look at it is like, he's not like these other people who his income depends on misfits like let's just be for real his income does not depend on influencer boxing. He doesn't need to fight or do influencer boxing all the time because he makes a lot of money elsewhere such as youtube or instagram or whatever else he does twitch i don't know but whatever else he does like he's a big influencer you know so i understand people calling him lazy but he's lazy because he can be when it comes to boxing he's not like these other people like other people misfits is their income misfits is their biggest paycheck that's not how it is for deji do you get what I'm trying to say? Saying all that, I do want to see him back on Misfits because I actually enjoy his story. I enjoy him losing again and again and again and then winning. So I do want to see him come back because he does bring a lot of fans and he is a big name. So it would be good to see him fight again. But I don't know. I feel like his focus is on YouTube. Like he's starting to post a bit more consistently. So we'll see. Maybe he'll be back, but I don't know. Joey Knight, who I actually like, by the way, he's actually one of my favorite Misfits. But he had a sit down video with True Geordie reacting to Misfits 13. And he explains more about what happened that night with Most Wanted. And he also clarifies some things that happened before Held up boy, as much as I possibly could on fight week. Like me and my coach Joe Miles and the rest of the team, Alfie and Tom, we had good chats with him, a couple of good pep talks with him, sort of thing. When um, you say pep talks, what do you mean? Did, did he need a pep talk or were you just offering it? No, he needed it. He needed it. Also, oh, was he showing signs earlier in the week that like this yeah. ain't all right? Yeah, unfortunately, it's easy to say that in hindsight. But in hindsight, the warning signs were there, man. They were they, they were definitely there. Um listen, most What kind of warning signs? Do you know do you know what most does, right? He um he talks out loud and he's talking to you but he's not talking to you you just happen to be there he's talking to himself so he, he would say certain things during fight week he went I think I'm the hardest puncher in this lightweight division really and I went you've been serious and he went yeah I've got the most power and I'm like fuck off what are you going on about like but we, we, we was having a good I, laugh I almost admire and, this sort of delusion because oh, if you know. believe in yourself it's a healthy thing but it, to a point yeah, it, <laughs> mate, know, if they offered a gold medal for a delusion he'd be an Olympian he, honestly like the fella oh, I don't know but basically the, the gist of it I got was and again it can sound patronising it potentially is patronising, but the gist of it I got is the fella needs an arm around him and he needs a bit of looking after. I have been, listen, like, regardless of misfits and the lights are brighter, the cameras are bigger, but regardless of that, I've been around boxing a long time. I've, I've, I've done a lot of boxing events, not just boxing myself, where I've cornered fighters, and I understand sometimes when they need a little bit of tapping into, and it felt to me like most wanted needed a little like, bit of an arm around him. We've Can you see it coming, basically, now looking back at it? Like, do you think... Yeah. Yeah, yeah I see it coming, yeah. But I didn't think it would happen, but now in hindsight, looking back, yeah. You know what confuses me? He made the walk against you and he did it so sort of casually. He, mm. he didn't look like he was even phasing the slightest, which for your first fight, I thought, you know what? You've got a fair bit of confidence there. Good, good luck to you. Like, so it never even occurred to me that he wouldn't make the walk against Fox because 
Uh, you've already been chinned and you've seen how it's bad, all right? But usually, it's a bit like failing a driving test or whatever. Once the worst happens, you're like, actually, now I, I can get a hold of this. Yeah. It's, it's strange to me you that could, he would have the, the frights now. You can look at it the other way, though. You could say before, he was going into the unknown and he didn't know the danger. And now, when it came round to it, he's pretty thinking, oh, that could happen again. And yeah, and so there were signs that this was going to take place. There was inklings that this that most might not make that walk. That's very, very interesting. This all just goes back to show that Wade was right in what he was saying, because the fact that, it, I didn't even know that most had never been on a plane. So he was in another country that he'd never been in. He'd never been on a plane. His main event for the first time. All of that was clearly just too much for him. This guy should have never been main event. He should have never, ever had been main event. I'm so happy that Mams has taken accountability and he's going to switch up things because this honestly shouldn't have happened. I know there's going to be some people who still don't really believe the whole panic attack thing, but to me personally, hearing that Joey said that there were signs that this was going to take place kind of confirms that he did have a panic attack, but that's just my opinion. If you guys put your opinions down below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.